Hello and good afternoon to my fellow engineers. You may remember from the last video that we made this assembly from you know all of the all of the parts that we've been making, um, and this was this was made in an assembly environment, whereas the uh, the part that we made in lesson two was made in the part environment, and that was um that was just this table here made as one solid part, and uh, I'm going to keep reiterating this back to you that that was obviously um, bad engineering practice to make it all as one part, so we decided to go ahead and make it in, a, in an assembly. Now I left you at the end of the last video without having all the dowel joints in. I think I showed you uh, that one and that one or something like that. Um, just to give you an idea of how to do it. And I've gone ahead and I put the rest of these dowel joints in. And there's 20 dowel joints in total, which means you need 20 dowels, obviously. Uh, so, um, and that's obviously uh, a 6, uh, 6, 4, and uh, 4. That's 20 dowel joints there. Um, and uh, these are all the parts included. I just wanted to uh, quickly end... Uh, uh, on the, this effectively th this uh, part of uh, um, last video on this video because um, in this video we've got um, we're going to be looking at the draft file um, introducing ourselves to uh, this sort of file here so that we can uh, we can um, send manufacturers our designs and say can you can you build this for us and also so that we've got a 2D re graphical representation for our own event because it's a so it's a lot easier to see these dimensions obviously a lot easier to understand these dimensions than if the dimensions were uh, shown on this uh, on this file. So I just wanted to show you really quickly um, uh, that that um, all of the parts that you've uh, that you've placed in uh, when an assembly are situated here. Um, I just thought I forgot to mention that last video, um, so I just thought I should let you know. So if I select something there, I can select it either there um, on the side, or I can select it and it, and it selects correspondingly. I just wanted to, to show you that. Okay. So um, this is the this is the part uh, this is the assembly that we're going to be uh, making a, a draft file of. So we're going to go ahead and save this. We're going to go ahead and save this and call it. Um, we'll just call it. Uh, we'll just call it table for now. Okay. Okay. So there you go. That's our that's our table there. And now we need to go ahead and make a, uh, a draft file. So we close this. Now we're back to our solid edge uh, startup screen. And again, that table is now in my recent documents, and it's now an assembly file. Notice that it's a .asm, not a .part file. So we've looked at part files, and we've used part files. Uh, we've created part files, and we've put them together in assemblies. And now we're going to open isometric draft. So we're going to use a draft file. So if you open that up, you'll have something that looks a little similar to this. Um, it may look a little bit different, um, but uh, just roll with me. Uh, if you double click uh, home, uh, if 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 uh, yours looks like uh, as it does now, don't do anything. You no, know, for, for a second. Um, if yours looks like mine does now, however, um, just double click on home, and then it will keep home fixed up there. I think the same thing happens in Microsoft Office programs and and uh, other programs as well. So um, ignore the background for a sec. Uh, all this information we can change later on. Um, we'll have titles and and our name and. Uh, thing you know, manufacturing uh, information there as well, and you can have a parts list as well. But we're going to look at um, parts list uh, in the next uh, set of tutorials, probably in the intermediate pack. Um, but we're going to change some of this stuff uh, later on. But first, we're just going to introduce our part to our system, our assembly to our system. So the way that we're going to do that um, uh, with this blank document is if you go up to uh, make sure that you're in the home tab, um, and it's a couple of long from select. If you see view wizard, yeah. Okay, then you're going to click on View Wizard, and we're going to go ahead and try and find where our uh, assembly uh, is. Now, mine was in the assembly table folder, but it's not here. So what's gone wrong? Well, in files of type, um, yeah, at the minute it's selected part documents, which are all these. Um, I can tell it to select this assembly, which is just that one there, or I can tell it to look at all of them. Um, so that's just the parts and the assemblies, because those are the things I've got in there at the minute. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and, and, and press table, and then that that just confirms that that's definitely the right part, uh, the definitely definitely the right assembly because um, uh, we just had that open and that's definitely the right one. So we can go ahead and press o uh, open for that. So um, the first thing it's going to do is uh, give us um, one initial viewing angle. This is just the isometric viewing viewing angle that we uh, last saved it on. Um, so we can go ahead and look at that. I'm just going to put that up there for now. Okay, so we also want to view some uh, some 2D uh, images as well, as you can imagine. So go back to View Wizard. 
um, so that you can set your parts again. And then here, just here on the uh, on the um, to the, the the movable toolbar, right in the middle, there's the view wizard, view orientation, and you can change which view you see. Okay. So we're going to start with uh, the front view, which uh, is actually uh, if I can just access it. So um, it's this view here. It's not this side. It's this side here. Is what uh, Solid Edge thinks our front front view is, which is fine. We'll we'll leave it at that for now. Um, I've clicked, and now it's going to allow me to put other views. Um, it's going to work in initially, and in it's, it's in its initial state. It's going to, um, you know, with its default settings, um, it'll work in a, a type of angling system called third angle projection, which basically means that um, obviously I've got this is the this uh, file this uh, image is the side file. Um, this is the next file if you were to rotate it uh, around. Okay. So if we were to go beneath it, it's the it shows you the image that you were to, to do beneath, like so. Okay. And then when you're done with that, just uh, just do right click. So we're going to go to select, and we're just going to move some of these around, um, just so that you can see them a little better. Um, one of the good things that you can do is uh, you can change the scaling. At the minute, they're all the same size as you can see. Um, we want to make we'll keep these ones at the same sort of size that they are because that's fine. But we want to we want to make this one a little bit smaller. It's just a general overview. It doesn't actually give us much information other than what it should look like. So um, we're going to select that image, and then we're going to we're going to refer our, our eyes to the uh, to this uh, setup here. And we're going to change the scale from one to five to one to ten, which uh, makes it twice as small um, from what it was. Originally, it was uh, five times smaller than the uh, final image, than the final product would be. All dimensions uh, would be uh, five times smaller on the page than they would be in real life, and now it's going to be ten times smaller on the page than it would be in real life. And that just gives us a general overview of everything. The next thing that we're going to have a look at, as I said, you can just uh, you know, drag these around. Um, next thing I'm going to devote your attention to are these. Uh, these, dot, these dotted lines, the ones in the middle. So if I select the middle, there's a dotted line there, this dotted line here, this dotted line here, and this dotted line here. Not not the dotted lines inside the product, the dotted lines that go outside and connect it to the middle. That's basically um, like a like sort, sort of like an axis that it will follow. So if I select the top part, yeah, then can you see that the middle, it, the middle and the bottom are staying in line with the top part? And if I do the same thing. The middle and the left one are staying in line with that, and that's that's really useful. It because um, that's part of third angle projection. Obviously, all the all these lines join up. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to remove um, these hidden lines. What these dashed lines are? They're called hidden lines, so they're there to basically show you um, the things that you can't see. Um, whereas this this middle line, th these two middle lines here, represent the shelf that goes along here which we can't see in this image, but we can see it in this image, so we don't need it. This bottom line here shows you uh, the, the bottom of this um, here, because obviously this is this this view here is just a, a wooden plane, whereas this section, this section, and correspondingly this section, and this section correspond to the two holes that you can see uh, here, the two actual shelves. So what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get through to you is that um, in this instance the uh, in this instance, the hidden lines aren't actually providing us with much information. We don't really need them. So, the way that we're going to get rid of them is if you select the middle product and then you right click, you can see uh, a couple of uh, things. Go down to the very, very bottom so you can see properties. Now, if you're not already on display, um, you probably start on general as a default. Uh, just click over to display. I'm not going to talk about everything right now, but um, this is all. These are all the parts you can actually dis uh, decide what parts you want to display. So if you wanted to remove um, the legs for some reason, you could remove the legs like so. But we're not going to be doing that. Um, we're just going to uh, remove the hidden edges. And if you look down this list, you'll see hidden edges, uh, hid hidden edge style, hidden. Right. We're not going to change the style. We just don't want them. So if you just press the uh, select button. And it will remove the show hidden edges by other parts as well. We just um, remove that and then press OK. Now this part no longer has the hidden edges. Now we'll need to do that to uh, 
for the rest of them as well. So bear with me while I quickly just go ahead and do that. And finally, with this one here. Okay. Um, another quick thing that I would like to just do um, is, as you can see, uh, these two images are fine because it's uh, it's the same either side. However, we can see the uh, the top of the uh, this here is the top of the um, table, and this is the bottom. And it would make more sense to put the bottom down here and this top section up here. So the way that we're going to solve that. We're just going to select this and we can drag this below it and we can take this top one and we can drag this one up like so. Okay. And that makes a bit more sense. And you can also, you can also do that when, um, when you're selecting the part, when you're in, you know, when you're, um, placing everything at the beginning. Um, we just didn't do that just so I could show you there. Um, right. So, and obviously we could do the same thing for these ones. We could put this one on that side and that one on that side. It wouldn't really give us any, um, it wouldn't give us any advantage. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to introduce you to a couple of the dimensional tools um, and then we're going to wrap up just by showing you how you can change some of the backgrounds um, and then and then that will be it. So I'll just show you how to do some of the dimensions. They work in a very similar way to his parts. You've got a smart dimension which um, measures just the length of whatever side you select or in the case of a circle it will just show you the, um, the radius of the circle or the diameter of the circle. Um, and you've got the distance between, which allows you to select two points, um, and it will tell you the distance between those two points or lines. These are these are the only two that we're going to be using. Um, the only, you know the only two really important ones that we're using at the minute. So that's fine. We're just going to stick with those ones for now. Some of these ones do do quite nice tools like angle between, for example. Um, and um, you know you've got you know, we've done chamfering as we know. We we, we could look at the chamfering. But we know what the chamfering is, and we we don't really care about it. We're not obviously getting this part actually made, so we don't need information just like that. We know it's a four millimeter chamfer at forty five degree angle. So um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to um, just introduce some uh, dimensions. So I'm going to go with the distance between dimension um, because because we've introduced uh, the smart dimension. If I just show you, for example, we've introduced the smart dimension. We want the length of this side. We want to know how tall this product is. If I select this edge, instead of being uh, 440, which we'd expect, it's 432. And that's because obviously we've chamfered it on both sides, and that means it's 4 millimeters shorter on both sides at this point. But obviously we want the uh, total dimension, so you just need to select uh, the distance between. And, and then the distance between that one, and it will give you the total dimension, which is quite useful. Now if that's quite difficult to read, um, we can just select that dimension. And we can just check, change the text scale. We'll just change that to two points, and that makes it twice as large. Okay. I'll just introduce some uh, some overall dimensions, just to uh, give you to, to further cement the idea of how it works. So I'm going to change go between that one and the legs. That's 680, and uh, and then I'll just introduce this one here as well. That's 400. So that just shows you what you can do, and you can do obviously you can do that with um, all of these dimensions, like all the smaller dimensions. It gives you all sorts of general ideas. But this is just how you introduce a dimension into the idea. Um, I'll do one last dimension for you, and it's going to be quite small, so you won't be able to see it from a distance, but you'll be able to see it if I zoom in. Um, we'll just show you the uh, the size of of the hole, which is going to be 10 millimeters, like so. Now, see, that's really quite small in comparison to the rest, so. Uh, and then when we, if we zoom out even further, it's quite difficult to see. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is just um, uh, effectively the page layout and what it looks like. So uh, if we if we direct our attention to down here, this uh, this grey pattern down here, um, the sheet I've got open it looks a little bit like Excel. The, the sheet I've got open is called Sheet One. Um, that's fine. We can call it other things. You know, you can have multiple sheets open with multiple dimensions. If you've got a really complex uh, assembly, you can have different uh, parts, sub-assemblies, and so forth. If you just right-click there and uh, select background, it shows you the different backgrounds that are available. Um, 
it, you know, there's A4 ranging to A1, and you can get um, B backgrounds and D backgrounds as well, but um, you know, you, they're, they're a lot less common. The next thing we're going to do is cl uh, right click on Sheet Setup and uh, press Sheet Setup. Okay. Right the size. So if we look uh, the size of the sheet, uh, it's going to be a standard A2 sheet, which means that when we attempt to print it, it's going to attempt to print an A2. Um, it's quite common to print an A2, especially for complex parts. Something like this, it's not really that complex. Uh, there's not much going on, so you probably don't need the extra space, but it's there anyway. Uh, the sheet name, we're just going to rename this to uh, assembly. Uh, I'll just actually call it table assembly. And the background that we're going to be using for this A2 shoot, uh, sheet is obviously the A2 sheet background. Obviously, we can select which one we view, but it would be illogical to use the A3 sheet background because um, it wouldn't actually cover the whole page, so it would cover half the page. So we're going to use the A2 sheet background. So that's that hasn't changed much because obviously we haven't changed the background. Now you can't change the background when you're in the uh, this section. You know, a lot a lot of people um, try to you know they're like, oh, I can't change solid edge. I'm trying to change. I don't want it to be called solid edge. I want it to be called um, you know, my project or the table project or something like that. But um, obviously, you, you, that's not how it works. It, this is the stuff that's actually on this file, on this, uh, on the you know, the stuff that you can change is in the table assembly, and that's overlaid on top of the A2 sheet. So if you want to change this stuff, you've got to open A2 sheet. This is your background, and then we can go down here, and then we can call it whatever we want to, and we can completely manipulate this. Um, we can comp completely. Uh, Manipulate this as much as we want. Um, we can say what angle, you know, what, uh, what the tolerances are here. We can say that it's drawn by certain people. We'll, so, we'll you know, we'll change it to, to, to today's date if, uh, if we are so inclined to. Um, it's uh, sheet three of one. This thinks I've got another two sheets uh, open. That's probably because I've made a couple of other sheets over the last few days. Uh, the file name at the minute is draft fourteen, as you can see up there. But we'll change that. But basically, it's in this page that you change things. Um, it's in this page that you change everything, and it's in this page that you will uh, we, we will eventually l look at some of the um, the subassembly lists, but we're not going to be looking at subassembly lists um, at all. So you've just changed the name of that. You feel free to go ahead and change some of that. Um, some of this stuff, like the date, um, the sheet number, the file name, is uh, is dynamic. It will change um, depending on what date you use. Some of this stuff, like the the file name or the the, the title. Um, is dependent on what uh, what you type in, same as the uh, same as the angles. So we just go back to our table assembly, and there you go. That's our table assembly, and that's uh, that's just the general dimensions. You can shove in your own dimensions as well if you'd like to. So um, we're gonna we're gonna save this file just as a table underscore assembly as a DFT file, draft file. And that allows us to send it to other people that have Solid Edge. Um, I think AutoCAD works with it as well. Um, you know, uh, Solid Works probably works with it. You know, it's, it's a universal um, file system. But we can also save that as other file extensions. So um, just to make it, uh, you know, quite easy to see, uh, we can save it as a PDF, uh, so that we can send it to people that don't have Solid Edge. Or these video, these pictures that I've got up here. I've uh, I went to save those as a uh, as an image, so you can save those as an image. Table assembly, and we'll just save that as a JPEG in the section. Okay. So that wraps up this video. I'm sorry it was a little bit longer, but that that, that, that just wraps up um, what we've gone here. Um, this is the end of the basic pack. We've looked at uh, parts, we've looked at uh, assemblies, we've looked at what solid edge can do, and we've looked at uh, how to make uh, simple draft files. Um, if you uh, if you want to keep progressing, there'll be the intermediate pack, which will show you a little bit more about you know, some of the cooler parts you can make, some of the cooler assemblies you can make, um, and some of the more, you know, some more more features that you can do with the uh, with the draft system. But um, uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you'd like to check that out, by all means go ahead. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching.